Madam President, the Children's Health Insurance Program in many ways has been an outstanding example of what a bipartisan democratic process can accomplish. Twenty years ago, President Bill Clinton worked with a Republican majority in both the Senate and in the House of Representatives to successfully pass the Children's Health Insurance Program into law. That legislation passed with 85 votes in the Senate, an overwhelming bipartisan vote to recognize the simple fact that all children born in this great country of ours should have health care coverage. The Children's Health Insurance Program, along with support for our nation's community health centers, have more often than not seen great bipartisan support. As members of Congress, we have always come together and understood the importance of these programs, and we have done everything that we can to ensure that quality, cost-effective care is available to millions of Americans. Unfortunately, as I stand here today, funding for both the Children's Health Insurance Program and Community Health Centers has expired. The Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP, provides health care coverage to over 100,000 children in my home state of Michigan and more than 9 million children nationally. In addition, community health centers serve a pri as the primary medical home to over 600,000 Michiganders and more than 20 million individuals across our country. For people living in rural and underserved areas, their community health centers are their doctor's office and often their only choice when it comes to care close to home. Madam President, we have already passed the deadline to extend the Children's Health Insurance Program and Community Health Center Fund. We are past the time to act. We should not wait any longer to provide certainty to the millions of children and their families who depend on CHIP and to the Americans who will lose access to care if their community health center is closed. We are already seeing the impact of our inaction in the CHIP program. Several states have begun to warn that they may be forced to end enrollment of new children, cut back services, or end their programs altogether if we do not act soon. Independent experts estimate that at least 10 states could completely run out of funding for their children's health insurance program before the end of the year, while funding for the remaining states' programs would not be very far behind. Madam President, this is not a responsible way to govern. I've heard from physicians in my state, especially in rural communities, who fear that this lack of action means great harm to the patients that they serve. I've heard from pediatricians who know firsthand what the end of CHIP would mean for Michigan's children. And as our country grapples with what we can do to expand mental health treatment and address the expanding opioid epidemic, letting these programs lapse would be a huge step in the wrong direction. This unnecessary uncertainty has already forced some community health centers to contemplate staff hiring freezes and layoffs. It is certainly harming their day-to-day -day operations. It has made it difficult for them to recruit new doctors, and it's made it harder for their offices to obtain loans to grow their practices and to serve more patients. Luckily, this is a problem that we know how to solve. I am proud to have co-sponsored bipartisan legislation with Senators Hatch and Wyden that would ensure funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program. I also support similarly bipartisan legislation by Senators Blunt and Stabenow to extend funding for our nation's community health centers. I welcome the fact that the Senate Finance Committee held a markup yesterday and were able to advance the bipartisan bill to fund the Children's Health Insurance Program. Now the rest of us in Congress need to do our job. Let's bring both of these bills up for a vote, because quite frankly, we cannot afford to wait any longer. Our nation's children and millions of Americans that use community health centers as their primary medical home cannot afford to wait any longer. Historically, these programs have not been controversial to reauthorize, and they should not be now. Madam President, I'm urging my colleagues to prioritize the children of our rural and underserved communities who will be hurt if we do not act soon. Let's do what's right for our country's children and families 
and pass this vital legislation as soon as possible. Madam President, I suggest the absence of a quorum.